Hi everyone. In today's video, I am going to discuss content analysis as a qualitative research method. In my previous videos, I have discussed the other types of methods that can be used in a qualitative research study, such as grounded theory, ethnography, case study, phenomenological study. So videos or the links to those videos can be found in the description section below. In today's video, I will explain in short what is content analysis and when do you use it, how do you use it and what goes with it. Alright, so a content analysis is actually a detailed and a systematic examination of material or of the contents of a particular body of material for the purpose of identifying patterns, themes or biases. Remember, the key words here are, it's a detailed and it's a systematic examination. So systematic means that it should be a scientific method. You should be able to explain how you went about this method. Content analysis is typically performed on human forms of communication, which includes books, newspapers, personal journals, legal documents, films, television, art, music, videotapes of human interaction, transcripts of conversation, internet blogs, and bulletin board entries. For example, a researcher might use content analysis to determine what kind of religious symbols appeared in work of art during a time period, or how middle school texts portray the nature of science or what attitudes were reflected in speeches from, let's say, a certain time period in a particular era of history. As you can see, content analysis can be found in various disciplines, including arts, education, history, psychology, journalism, political science. However, this method involves the greatest amount of planning out of all qualitative research methods and this has this planning has to be done at the front end of the project right at the beginning right because the researcher will typically define a specific research problem and the research question at the very beginning for example what religious symbols appeared in early Byzantine architecture and with what frequency during the years 527 to 867. Furthermore, the researcher takes measures to make the process as objective as possible and follows the following step. First, the researcher will identify the specific body of material to be studied. If this body is relatively small, it is studied in its entirety. If it is quite large, for example, if it consists of all newspaper articles written during a particular time period or a sample, random sample is then selected. Second step is that the researcher defines the characteristics or qualities to be examined in precise, concrete terms. The researcher may identify specific examples of each characteristic as a way of defining it more clearly. Third, if the material to be analyzed involves complex or lengthy items, for example, works of literature or transcripts of conversation, the researcher will break down each item into small manageable segments that will be analyzed separately. Number four, the researcher will scrutinize the material for instances of each characteristic or quality as mentioned in step 2. When judgments are more objective, for instance when the study involves looking for the appearance of certain words in a text, only one judge or rater is necessary looking for the appearance of certain words in a text because it's pretty straightforward, right? It's pretty straightforward. You can justify that this word appeared in the text once, twice or thrice. The evidence is there for everybody to see. However, when the judgments are subjective, 
For instance, when the study involves categorizing discrete sections of textbooks as conveying various messages about the nature of science, where it is more subjective, where the judgment of only one rater cannot be trusted, then you will employ two or more raters and a composite of their judgment will be used. Content analysis does not always be a stand-alone research method. For example, a systematic content analysis might be an integral part of the data analysis in a phenomenological study. Or a content analysis might also be used to flesh out the complex multidimensional aspects of a descriptive or an experimental study resulting in a mixed method design with both qualitative and quantitative elements. So even when a content analysis is the sole research methodology, it's apt to have a quantitative component. For example, quantification may involve simply counting the number of times or counting the frequencies with which various characteristics are, obs are observed in the body of the data being examined. But alternatively, a researcher might also conduct one or more statistical analysis on the numbers obtained. For instance, comparing the numbers obtained from two or more distinct subsets of the material being analyzed. So the method of data analysis in this kind of a research method is the tabulation of the frequency of the characteristic right how many times does the characteristic appear in a body of material it can also involve descriptive or inferential statistical analysis as needed to answer your research question the focus is on any verbal visual or behavioral form of communication so guys uh, this was content analysis and that covers the five types of research methods that we can adopt in a qualitative study so in this video, I only discussed content analysis, but in the description section below, you will find the details of the other methods. I try to keep my videos short so that they are engaging and not too long and boring. You get a bite sized idea of the topic and uh, let me know what you thought about this video and thank you for supporting the channel.